got a lot of Christmas cards or birthday cards or whatever cards that have a lot of thickness or maybe are really big, let's go over how to make one of these templates and go over some rules from the United States Postal Service so you can get your card mailed on time and not in shambles or sent back to you. This is Noreen from joyofcards.com and welcome to my video. So I'm about ready to send out my family Christmas cards and I don't, generally don't mail cards. I usually hand a card to someone, but I am mailing my cards today and there are some restrictions and rules with the United States Postal Service. And one of them is the thickness of a card. And if you go by the rules of the post office, it can't be more than a quarter of an inch thick. And we'll go over the um, rules on square cards and all the different size kinds of cards. So stay tuned for those things as well. But the first thing I wanna do is make a template. Every card maker should have one of these Thicknix templates. They're very easy to make, so let's make one. The reason why you wanna make one of these is because we put a lot of embellishments on our cards. There's things like foam adhesive sheets, not so much the dimensionals, but the foam adhesive sheets are rather thick. And you wanna make sure not only are they going through, which this has no problem, but if you also have dimensional or little embellishments that stick up really high or you made the the card really intricate and so you just want to make sure so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a piece of thick cardstock now they kind of hide this in the stampin up annual catalog it's on page 126 and it's right here they make it in white and very vanilla and it's just that thick cardstock that they want you to use now a lot of people use this for their card bases i don't um it's kind of pricey and i rarely use it except and things like this. I want something a little harder than just regular cardstock. Now I was gonna make this template with cardboard, but I wanna go ahead and use my Stampin' Up! cutter because most everybody will have one of these. I have a big cutter that I cut all kinds of cardstock on, but it doesn't lift up anyway. So what we're gonna do is take just a basic uh, white uh, heavy cardstock and we're gonna cut it in five and a half because we're just gonna make one and you can save this piece for later. Now that you got your piece cut, we're gonna refer to my chart here. Now, this is on joyofcards.com slash shop under PDFs. Now, you can either get a PDF of this or you can buy a laminated color layered zoo printer on Legal Paper One. It's like $7, but you can get this as a PDF. Uh, all my PDFs are $2, but the thing is once you buy one PDF for $2, you get a coupon that you will always get any PDF on my site for free. The coupon never expires, so that's really good to know. Anyway, but this is a great card chart for knowing a lot of things, not only about card sizes, but about the United States Post Office and how it relates to the piece that we're making. So if you look here on the left, these are the basic card sizes. Now you can make a card any size you want. There are no rules except when you try to mail it. So these are the basic sizes that you'll run across. There's all the way from A1, A2, A6, A7, A9. There are four typical slimline cards. There's a big one, a mini one, a popular one, and a traditional slimline, and they're all on here. And then there's squares, which we'll get to in a second. But this chart will show you what the actual folded card size like this will be. It will also show you the paper size, the whole size. And it'll tell you where the score lines are, whether it's turned one side or not. It'll also take you down through all the layers from an eighth of an inch all the way to an inch. So if you like making layers on your cards like this, this is a layer right here. Also, it'll tell you the envelope sizes and it'll tell you what the postage is all the way to the square one. Now, the postal uh, rate right now is 66 cents. They upped it like a couple of months ago. So what we're going to look at when we are determining the size of the whole of this is the card side already made. Now, we're going to look for the biggest or the longest, you know, because we're going to do this size first here, the longest side that we're gonna need. Now, 
This is a five and a half by four and a half. So the biggest one is five and a half. This is four and a half by six and a quarter. So you can do the four and a half th through instead of the six and a quarter. Uh, then you got five by seven. So that's five. Here's five and a half by eight and a half. So that's five and a half. So the biggest one is really five and a half because you can turn it one way or the other. Now I made this one six and a half just to give me a little wiggle room. So that's how I came up with how long I wanted to make this. I also do want to point out the rules. Now, square cards are not mailable through the United States Post Office unless you get it hand canceled. Not every post office will offer this. Some people will even say, oh, we don't do that. That's a lie. You just went to the wrong post office. So call ahead or look online, see if they still hand cancel at your local post office. But that's how you get it hand canceled. You have to go through the line and they hand cancel it. So if you're doing wedding invitations or anything like that, and they're a funky size, you're going to have to go through that. Now I say size, and, you know, they got to make it complicated. There's actually a formula for size ratio. They call it an aspect ratio. And I've got some blurbage down here. An as aspect ratio is the length divided by the height. And the ratio must be between 1.3 and 2.5, or the letter is subject to a non-machinable surcharge, which is a hand cancel, or if it's too big, it'll go into the larger envelopes and it's not a regular uh, kind of letter. Also, envelopes can't be larger than a six and an eighth by 11 and a half or smaller than three and a half by five. Anything over is a flat rate or whatever they're calling it lately. They've gotten rid of first class mail and called it something else. The maximum weight is 13 ounces and maximum thickness is a quarter of an inch, which is what we're going to make here. So hold tight. And then all envelopes must be rectangle. And that relates to that aspect ratio I just told you. So these square ones, because it's smallest square envelope you can send through, whether hand canceled or not, because of the ratio is five and five by five. That is the smallest one you can do. So if you've got a Christmas card and you made it a four and a half by five, then they're, they're not going to take it. They'll come, they'll send it back to you. So um, five by five is the smallest, but you can get it hand canceled if it's within that ratio. So if you make it a five by five, you have to go through the line. They have to hand cancel it. And non-machinable means there's something on your envelope that's clogging up their machine. So it's thicker than a quarter of an inch or you've got an embellishment that's poking through the envelope and it won't go through their machine. It'll clog their machine. You'll get it uh, sent back to you possibly in a non pristine <laughs> kind of situation. It'll be all chewed up. So you got to, you got to follow their rules because they'll, they'll get you. And then of course, international is a whole different story. A one ounce letter to another country. It's a dollar fifty. You can buy international stamps in the machines in the lobby. Just got an international stamp, and it doesn't matter where it goes. It's a dollar fifty as long as it's you know within reason. So let's get to making our template. So we've got two things involved. We've got the length and the width. Now I did this one in the center because I think it just looks better. So I know that this is an eight and a half. The longest I want to make this is six and a half. We only need five and a half, but I made it six and a half just to give it a little wiggle room. And it's better to divide this up. So six and a half and eight and a half, that's two inches. So I'm going to leave an inch on each end. So when I start this, uh, when I start cutting, I'm going to start at the inch and I'm going to end at the seven and a half. Okay. Plus, this has got to be a quarter of an inch. This is a five and a half across because I wanted to keep my other side of the paper for something else. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go five and a half. Half of five and a half is two and three quarters. Okay. That is the middle. Now I want the cut in the middle of the middle. So I'm going to go an eighth of an inch more. So it's going to be two and seven eighths. And I'm going to put my cutter here. I'm going to get rid of the score, put it at the top or take your cutter off and just plop this right down in the middle and push down on it. 
And I'm going to go all the way because there's uh, a number, there's a ruler here. There's also these little slits on the side. And I'm going to push this down so I know I'm through the paper and bring this all the way up to the one. So that line and that line are lined up. Then I'm going to go all the way down to the seven and a half. So right there. Okay. So that's one of them. Now I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to bring it back to the 275. And then I'm going to go an eighth of an inch the other direction, an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to put this down right in the middle, push this down, and I'm going to go all the way up to the one. And then I'm going to go all the way down to the seven and a half. And what you're going to get is this. And now all we have to do is cut off the ends. So I pulled out my arm here, turned it the other way, and I'm going to use this ruler again and go 275 because I know it goes 275 and push it down. And I'm going to go an eighth of an inch to one side and an eighth of an inch to the other side. Then lift it up, turn it around, take this end to seven and a half, take this end to 275. Push that down, push down the paper, and do the same thing. You probably even will feel it hitting the other, the two lines, and I'll just pop out. So I've lifted this up, and pow, just like that. Now, don't go away yet. So I've got these two cards, and the only difference between these two cards is one has this these embellishments, and the other one doesn't. Why? Because I took them off. Now, I know when I made this card, it looks prettier with the little embellishments here, but no one's going to know that that was the card's original design. So if you want to avoid any problems with the post office, just take those little doohickeys off. So get one of these rubber um, eraser things. I'll put the link in my description of my video because sometimes the glue sticks to the card a little bit when you take it off. And you use these little eraser things and it's like magic. Now, if you don't want to do that and you think it's going to be okay with the post office, the one thing you do want to do is emboss a piece of a cardstock. Now, I went ahead and I used a 3D embossing folder. And this is a 5 by 7 card. So this is a big card. So I had to run it through twice. Now, if you're making a lot of Christmas cards, here's a tip. Try not to use an embossing folder that's a 3D because the 3D ones... You should spritz down so they don't crinkle. I didn't spritz this one down on purpose and it crinkled a little bit here. And so you don't want to do that. So just use a regular embossing uh, folder and something with a lot of stuff on it. So it's going to be taking up, you know, being a little shock absorber for your embellishment here. And this card actually is a really cool card. It's on one of my videos. It pops up like this and uh, sits up. By the ribbon. So this is a really cool uh, fun fold card. I even might even have a PDF on this. So you can, um, like I said, you buy one of these for two bucks, you get all my PDFs. And this happens to be one of my PDFs that I did in a uh, engineering software called AutoCAD. So the measurements are dead on perfect. Anyway, so if you want to leave those embellishments on, put a piece of embossed uh, cardstock on top of it. So when it goes through their machines, it doesn't poke through the envelope. Another thing is to buy a good quality envelope. This particular envelope, I probably got it on Amazon, is not a good quality envelope. And they do have good quality envelopes in the Stampin' Up! catalog if you just want to make sure. Now, I buy lots of envelopes, so I, I might not. Anyway, so, <laughs> anyway, so that's those are the kind of the rules on... Uh, whether or not it will go through. Now, let's go ahead and do this. This has the embellishment on it, and it has an embossing folder. So let's take our little template here and see if it goes through the hole. And it does. Now, it's a little tight. Uh, you know, you might want to go ahead and take those little doohickeys off. Now, here's the card without the little uh, embellishments on it. This is the card without the embellishments, and there's definitely a lot more room than the one with. So my recommendation, if you're going to put it through the mail, take these off and just play it safe. 
And that is my video, how to make these. And all the cards you see here are in uh, on my site, joyacards.com, or you can go at Joy of Cards on YouTube, and that will do it for me. Thank you very much. Bye.